In October 1946, an American soldier named John Clarence Woods had reason to be happy. He had enlisted in the Army three years before, though his career had been mediocre. His only significant progress came in 1944, when he offered to take charge of executions ordered by the armed forces. He claimed that he had experience in the trade, as he had been in charge of enforcing death sentences in Texas and Oklahoma. This, however, was a blatant lie, since the last time there was an execution in those places was when Woods was 12 years old. He had never been near a gallows or an electric chair, although this did not stop him from getting the job. The army simply didn't care about his background. From this moment on, his career improved considerably, to the point that he was promoted to the rank of Master Sergeant. In October 1946, he received some of the most important news in his life, 12 Nazi leaders had been sentenced to death at the Nuremberg trials, and he was the executioner in charge. Sergeant Woods was aware that he would go down in history for this fact, and he also knew that it was his opportunity to give those responsible for the war what they deserved. For this reason, he prepared a gloomy surprise for them, something that would make their last moments of indescribable pain. Don't move from your screen, because in the next few minutes, we will tell you all about the Nuremberg executions. But before continuing, and if you are a fan of firearms, we want to invite you to our new channel, World of Guns, dedicated to analyzing and exploring the most powerful, modern and unusual weapons in the world, as well as their combat history, their development and much more. You can find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment, don't miss it and give us your support by subscribing to World of Guns. Between November 1945 and October 1946, the International Military Tribunal functioned, in charge of judging the representatives of the Third Reich for their crimes. Throughout the process, there were various testimonies about the concentration camps and their activities, where the horror that had happened there was clear. Confronted with their own wickedness, the Nazi commanders claimed that the evidence had been falsified, and that they were unaware of the reality of the killing centers. The defense was poor, and as was to be expected, the tribunal was adamant with those defeated in World War II. Finally, 12 of them were sentenced to death by hanging for various crimes against peace. However, one of the defendants was Hermann Göring, who committed suicide the day before the executions were due. They found him in his cell, lifeless after ingesting a cyanide capsule, which he obtained under mysterious circumstances. Another who escaped his sentence was Martin Bormann, who had perished a year earlier while trying to escape from the Allies, for which he was sentenced in absentia. On October 16, 1946, a scaffold was erected in the Nuremberg prison yard. The process was in charge of the United States Army, being Sergeant John Clarence Woods the executioner who would adjust the noose around the neck of the condemned. The method used for the executions would be hanging by long fall, which consisted of calculating, according to the weight of each person, the rope necessary to break the neck instantly. However, Sergeant Woods had a surprise in store for the Nazis. As a way to make them pay for their crimes, he assigned them ropes that were too short, so they would not die immediately, but would instead be slowly strangled to death by suffocation. The first to be sent to the scaffold was Joachim von Ribbentrop, the foreign minister of the Third Reich. He was accused of being responsible for the atrocities committed in Denmark and Vichy France, since the German occupation governments installed in these countries responded to him. Ribbentrop said that, actually, the one who made the decisions was Hitler and not him, and that his only mission was always to seek international peace. However, the former minister never reneged on his loyalty to the Fuhrer, since on one occasion he was heard to say the following, even now, that I know the whole truth of what happened, if Hitler appeared in my cell and gave me an order, I would comply without hesitation. Moments before he was hooded and hung, he had the chance to utter his last words, God protect Germany and guard my soul. I wish that my country will regain unity and that, for the sake of world peace, there will be an understanding between the East and the West. Next it was the turn of Wilhelm Keitel, commander of the German armed forces. While he was on the bench, standing before the judges, he maintained that he was aware that Hitler's orders were illegal, 
but that he was bound by an oath of allegiance to obey them. He asked to be executed by firing squad, but his wish was denied, and instead he was sentenced to hang, as he befitted a war criminal. This was the last thing he said, I ask Almighty God to have mercy on the Germans. More than two million of our soldiers marched to their death for their country, and now it is my turn to follow their path. The trapdoor in the scaffold was too small for a large man like Keitel, so when it opened and the major fell through, he hit his head hard. He was strangled to death while bleeding from the wound. Then it was the turn of Ernst Kaltenbrunner, an SS officer, who lamented that the Burmacht had been commanded by inexperienced men. Seven minutes later, one of the main ideologues of Nazism, Alfred Rosenberg, climbed the scaffold. When asked if he had any last words, he replied with a curt no, after which he was hanged. As Rosenberg's body was removed, Hans Frank, who had been the governor of Poland during the German occupation, entered the execution room. According to witnesses, he was the only one who looked genuinely remorseful and seemed horrified by the images of the concentration camps shown at the trial. In fact, Frank had voluntarily handed over his 43 private diaries to the court, and it was thanks to this material that they found the evidence to convict him. At the gallows, the ex-governor smiled and calmly thanked his captors for treating him decently. He was relieved that he could pay for his crimes, and before dying he asked God to have mercy on his soul. The guards then escorted Wilhelm Frick, Hitler's minister of the interior, to his final destination. Of all the condemned, he was the one who looked the most nervous, to the point where he tripped several times with the gallows steps and seemed about to faint. The last batch of executed was made up of Julius Stryker, Fritz Sockel, Alfred Jodl and Arthur Seisencourt. They had been, respectively, the leader of the Nazi party in Franconia, the regional head of Thuringia, the chief of operations of the high command of the armed forces, and the deputy governor of Poland. The most striking death was that of Julius Stryker, since he was not a military man and had had no role in planning the Holocaust or in invading other countries. However, the court found that he had played an important role in spreading anti-Semitism through his speeches and his writings. In particular, Stryker had run an extremely violent newspaper, accusing Jews of various crimes and promoting hatred of them. Therefore, the judges argued that he had been an accomplice in the Holocaust by paving the way for genocide. As he was led to the scaffold, he shouted a defiant Heil Hitler, for those present to hear. Once on the platform, he cursed the Jews, and when the executioner pulled the hood over his face, he managed to say, in a loud voice, you will all be hanged by the Bolsheviks. Before the noose was tightened around his neck, he murmured, Adele, my dear wife. The hatch opened and Stryker was suspended in midair. Just as Sergeant Woods had planned, he did not die immediately, but he slowly suffocated, kicking in the air until finally he lay still. The corpses were cremated and their ashes thrown into a river, to avoid the existence of graves that could become altars for neo-Nazis. Thus concluded some of the most important executions in history. As we reach the end of the video, we want to ask you, do you think Sergeant John Woods should have been punished for hindering the executions? Leave us your answer below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.